If I was getting into property again, I'd go straight into a simple buy to let. And here's why. You see, have you ever walked down the street and you've ended up realizing I finished my education, I've started work, now what? Well guys, my name is Sean Land and I'm a property expert. I actually bought my very first property over 20 years ago. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you the exact blueprint on buying your very first home. I'm gonna tell you all of the tricks of the trade and how you can take the quickest shortcut to buy your first house. So before we go any further, make sure you smash the subscribe button, leave me a comment, and make sure you share this video because this is the only thing that you'll need to buy your first house. You see, the very first thing that you actually need is you need a little bit of finance. And sometimes you don't know what that looks like. Well, this is what it looks like. When you get paid every single month, the very first thing that you'll actually need is something called a mortgage. What is a mortgage? Well, have you heard of something like a credit card or a loan? Basically that, you're borrowing money off the bank, but it's actually attached to the property. And why do you need one of these? Well, it will help you to actually buy that house. You think, I see this big property and it's worth 400,000. I need 400,000. No, you don't. The bank's gonna give you 75% of that at least. Now, if this is a house that you're gonna live in, you actually only need 5% of that money. Great news, right? And the banks will lend you all of that and all you gotta do is put like 10, 5, 10, 15, 20% in from yourself and the bank will t attach that together so you're able to buy this house. What is the requirements to get in a mortgage? Well, if it's for you to live in, here's the thing, all you gotta be doing is working, which is what we're doing anyway. You wouldn't even be thinking of a house if you weren't working. You need pay slips, you need a small deposit. Small deposit could be anything from 5% to 25%, depending on the mortgage product you're going. And here's the thing, if you're with a partner and you're doing this together, you can add both of them together to make it even easier. The next thing that you'll also need is you'll need your bank statements. And these days, it's all online and the banks accept that. And Finally, you'll need your ID. You'll need your proof of identification so the banks can do all of their AML checks, which is anti-money laundering. They wanna make sure you are who you are. So now we've got that out of the way, you're probably thinking, what's the right amount to borrow? Well, here's the thing. If you are currently renting and you wanna buy your property for yourself, the likelihood is a mortgage is gonna be similar to what your rent is, apart from you own this property now. And the thing is with properties, they go up in value. So over time, property prices will probably go up, but your loan will stay the same. This means that you will actually earn from this investment that you currently own. Now here's the thing, if you've got your own house or you're living at home and you're quite comfortable and you wanna buy something to rent out, well you're gonna need a little bit more money because the banks know that you're gonna be making money from this and they want a little bit more security. So they're gonna want anything from 15 to 25%. So here's an example. If something's for 400,000, if you wanna let that out, you want at least 100,000 to put down and the bank will lend you 300,000. So the next question I'm hearing you ask is, Sean, there's two types of mortgages in terms of interest only or repayment. What do they mean? Well, exactly what it says on the tin. Interest only means that you're never paying that loan back off to the bank. You're actually just paying the interest. It sounds like a really bad thing. However, the benefit of this strategy is your payments every single month will be lower. And if you save your money in a separate account, every year you can end up paying 10% of that loan down if you wish. If you have a repayment mortgage, your payments will be higher, but that's not because you're paying for the fun of it, it's you're gonna be paying some of the mortgage off and the interest on top of it. So if it's a 25 year term, at the end of the 25 years, your mortgage will be finished. And if it's on an interest only in 25 years, the mortgage you started off with would still be there. So you might need to have a different exit vehicle, such as sell it or refinance that deal. Get another new loan to pay off the old one. So there's the difference between both of them. If it's for me, if I'm living in that house, I want it on repayment. I want to know that whatever happens in my business, my life, at the end of the day, in 25 years, this house is mine and I don't have to worry about anything. But if this is a business, then I'm not that emotional. It's just supposed to be a cash flowing machine. I want the payments to be small as possible so I can make as much 
much money as possible from that investment to use that money to then buy more houses. Apart from the interest and repayment, there's one more thing you gotta watch out for. Banks do fixed rate mortgages or they do tracker variable rates. What are the differences? So when you're on a fixed rate, you might have an interest rate of 3%. And what that means is if you've agreed terms for two, three or five years, say five years, that 3% will always be 3%. So if that's 3% on what you've borrowed and it's 500 pounds a month, it will be 500 pounds for the rest of them five years, every single month. Now, there's another product called a tracker variable. And that basically means it tracks the base rate. You know that rate that the Bank of England say what we borrow money out, which is currently, you know, at 5% or 4.75%, they will say we will charge you 2% on top of that. So if, for example, if the base rate is 5% now, and they're saying 1% above base rate, your mortgage will now be 6%. Here's the clever thing. If the Bank of England base rate drops to 4%, you're only 1% above, you will now pay 5%, so your mortgage will go down. But on the flip side, if the base rate decides to go up, your mortgage payments will go up, so it's less certainty. This relies on you making a future prediction to say, is the rates going up or down? And if you don't know what you're doing, this could be a lot more risky. For me personally, I've always gone for a fixed rate. Unless I could see the economy starting to recover, come back down and I know interest rates are due to go down, then what I would do is go for a shorter fixed period. It's still fixed, but it's rather two years rather than five year fixed. And that's just on my risk spectrum. On your risk spectrum, you might be at a totally different place, but I need to make sure I know exactly what my payments are and I need that certainty. Now, I know that was a lot of numbers, a lot of mumbo jumbo, and you're thinking, whoa, my brain's hurting. But I want you to fully understand this. And I know you can't learn property in one day. It's a journey and I'm still learning being 20 years on, whether that's buy to let, I've moved on to HMOs, I've moved on to semi-commercials and still more into the development and construction. So here's the thing, I'd like to offer you something for free and that is to come and join our Discord lives. For that, you've got to join the Discord channel absolutely free of charge. We do weekly lives where we talk about all different property strategies. We build a community there. You get to ask questions on our lives as well. Now that's a deal you can't afford to miss. You've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. So without further ado, I do want to say bye, but I want to say I'll see you in the Discord. So until then, I'll see you guys, peace.